hi and uh, welcome to another get fix uh, repair uh, video um, today I have a, a Sony XBR um, 65X 850E model um, now this TV does not power on however when you plug it in you hear this high pitched noise or sound that comes um, from the TV uh, apparently the one who owned it just said that um, he went switched it on and then that was the noise that was coming in okay so uh, there were a bunch of screws I have just removed the screws here they are clearly marked by the arrows okay so that is basically what I have done um, I just pull this one out there was also one screw here okay. and um, <clears throat> this one basically lifts up but I think um, and then you slide it you push it and oh, okay so you press this down press with this one up you press it down you press there you would see some um, sections here just press it down and then push okay do the other side okay so you just do that press Then we can feed this one through. Right. So this one. I suspect the noise is coming from the power supply. Yep. So, yeah, that's, the sound is coming from the power supply. Okay. Okay, so, um, now with buzzing noises like this, I suspect there is a problem with the power supply. Let me unplug this one here, which goes to the motherboard, and let me switch it back on and see. Okay, so I've switched it on, but um, I don't hear any sound. So I checked the I checked the standby voltage and um, yes i do get a voltage there so i have it on pin number five and you see when you look here it's, we have one two so it's basically you count one and then top two three four five so um the first one is one two three four and then so that will be number three which is the third pin Let's see here and um, as you can see we have uh, 3.5 volts so we have a standby volts um, i tested this ones here the ones which are supposed to give us 12 volts and i doubt we would even get 12 volts because a signal has to come in here from the motherboard to switch everything on and get the required voltage okay. so whilst doing some tests i found out that I found that these two diodes are basically giving me some form of a shot. So when I put my multimeter in a shot, um, that is continuity, sorry. Okay. See when I when I put this, this one is showing a shot. 
and this one too. This one is also giving me a shot. However, when I do this, I'm not getting any shots here. Okay. So these two here. Now, I can also put it in a form of a diode mode. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm able to see. Okay. In diode mode, um, if I put it in the forward bias, I would get a reading. Okay, I would get a reading in this as well. Okay, but when I put it in reverse bias, I get an OL, which is should be the right way. When I put it here too, I get an OL. But for these two, when I put in the forward bias, I get zero, like zero. I put this here to zero, and when I move it into the reverse bias, I was supposed to get an OL, okay? But I'm getting a zero. So either these two, either these two are bad, or one of them is bad. The thing is that they are connected in, they are connected together, so. Even if one of them is showing a shot or has an issue, it will make it look like the other one has a problem. So, um, but the thing is that for diodes, you can't be concrete. Sometimes you can be getting a false reading. So you may have to pull it out completely and then test it outside. And the interesting thing is that when I looked very closely, okay, I'm not sure if it's going to be visible. When I look very closely, um, see here, you could see that this two here, kind of nice. When you look very closely, they look kind of a bit shiny compared to this one here. You see, it looks like this ones are uh, the, the 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 copper wires are kind of looking. A bit more nicer and shiny compared to this one and then I could see here this brown I'm not sure if it's clear enough but let me see if I can angle see uh, yeah this one here you can see that this side here is a bit brownish yeah so yeah it could be that one of them has a problem so I will pull them out of circuit and then we can test it and so these are the two diodes uh, the two diodes that show in a short so if I flip it if I flip it that way Okay, so that will be these two connectors here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this one first. I'm going to take out this one first. And then check it first and then I'll look at this just to see. So let me just test this one first before I move on to the other diode so okay. so I put it into continuity mode okay so now let's check this one okay so this one is no more giving us a continuity uh, like a short okay this was the first one now let me put it into diode mode okay now in the past when I put it in the forward bias <coughs> forward bias I will get a zero 
and I will get a zero here on the reverse. Now for the first one, and I did. This is the forward bias. Okay. Then the reverse. I should get an OL. Okay, perfect. So this an OL. This an OL. And then forward bias. Two nine seven. Two nine eight. Three one five. Okay. So just as um, I predicted, this diode load kind of brownish or kind of blackish on the sides if you compare to the shiny ones this one though has a brown kind of a thing here but um i think it's okay I could prefer i could prefer to also just change that one as well but um uh, yeah so the shot here is now gone and um i need to check change this this one is an sb5150 SB5150. Okay, so um, I I had to buy uh, replacements of the diode. I didn't have any um, on hand, so after two days, I got this. I purchased this from um, DigiKey. Now, one thing is that um, this one here is the SB5150. That was the 41 which was on the board um, but they are no longer being manufactured under this brand so <clears throat> I did a bit of research and um, the next one or the same I would say it's the same because um, I checked the data sheets and they all had the same specifications this one is SR515 so SB5150 I got a replacement which has the same specs as this one. I pulled out the first one which was shorted, but um, I decided to pull the one that is that also showed some kind of uh, it had a bit of marks, dark marks on it, even though it was still working. So I decided to buy 10 and then use two for this. So to connect the diodes, um, you just have to watch out for where we have the cathode. Um, which is the negative and I'm um, looking at the band here that should correspond to where we have the band on the board as well so um, basically I fold um, bend the pins and then insert it in there make sure that it's all the way in And then um, I applied some flux to it. Then using the sodium ion and some <coughs> soda, um, I set my temperature to around 270 degrees and just soldered the pins to the board. So after soldering all of them, um, just cleaning and wiping off all the excess and um, just cutting off the excess pins that are sticking out. So I'm just testing it again just to ensure that there is no more shots and uh, by testing I don't find any shots. So I did put the board back to the TV and then um, applied power. First of all, I applied power by disconnecting all the other things that goes to the motherboard. Just to ensure that in case there is an issue, um, I do not affect or destroy any components on the motherboard. <coughs> after checking, um, after plugging it back in, I didn't find any um, noise there wasn't any buzzing sounds um, which is basically a very good sign so I unplugged it and then 
I now connected all the other peripherals to the power supply board and um, everything was good so yeah I'm just going to uh, put the back cover in place and uh, yeah everything worked out perfectly as you can see the TV is back up and running and everything seems to be working perfectly fine and um, I couldn't capture a video of it in, in in motion so I had to take some pictures of it and uh, yeah I hope um, you enjoyed the video thank you for sticking with me I hope to see you again in another get fixed repair video and today stay safe